everyone, and today we are celebrating 20 years of the Dreamcast. They are celebrating, Sega is celebrating, well, I don't know if they're really celebrating it, but I'm celebrating it. 20 years of the Dreamcast, an awesome system. I remember when the Dreamcast first came out, I mean, I remember we were seeing lines around the stores and everything, and it was just all in the news. People were fanatic about the system. And I remember the first time my friend brought the Dreamcast over to my house and we played Sonic Adventure. I couldn't believe how much fun that game was. We played all the way almost close to the I would say close to the end on our on our first go with the game, man. We played it that long. Um, it's just great to see new games still coming out for the Dreamcast, and that's what I want to talk about today. We're celebrating the Dreamcast. We're talking about some new releases for the system. Well, at least games that were released after the system was officially um, discontinued. So uh, let's get right into it. This is the day you have trained for. The day you have studied for, utilize your superior skills, your superior intelligence. Sit down, Rodin. Oh, Sarah, baby. Oh, you were one. Fly. Don't make me hurt you. Learn to defeat your ruthless enemy, Steve of Hackensack. Ryan, you're gonna get root. Shut up, quadruped. It's thinking. All right, guys. So we're gonna start the list off with Ghostblade, a shoot 'em up bullet hell. And, you know, the thing that drew me into this game is that I love shoot 'em ups that have to do with you being in space. You know, about, I was always, like, really fascinated with astronomy back when I was in high school. And I still somewhat am. But, you know, like, space travel is something I've always, like, hoped that we'd be able to accomplish. So, you know, this game just was really, like, beautiful to me right away. So as you guys can see from the action here, this game pulls no punches from the beginning. I mean, the action starts off fast paced. You got to blow things up and you got to make sure you clear those, the screen and uh, collect those points too, because you got to remember too, when, when it comes to shoot 'em up games, it's about that high score system and leaving your name in the system for people to remember you. This game has an awesome soundtrack too. Really nice on the ears. And actually the soundtrack is actually available out there for you to pick up. Uh, definitely worth uh, hearing. And here are some of the boss battles here. The boss battles are actually a lot of fun. So the bosses really change things up. You got to be careful. You, you'll get used to their patterns, just like any other shoot 'em up game. But this is something about this game. It's just, oh my gosh, this is so freaking cool that we have another Dreamcast game. You know, this game actually came out a couple years ago, but it went out of print. And I was able, I was lucky enough to get sent this copy by the Bit Station. Appreciate you guys. All the controls feel really good. Everything is precise. You know, uh, the way you you attack in this game, you hold the button down and you do a charge shot like you're seeing here. And if you just kind of slightly push it, you know, you'll do like regular shots here and there. Uh, not, you know, something to kind of change it up, like you have your little spread shot and everything like that. I could be doing it wrong, but I can't really remember. But uh, yeah, here's my game over screen. I actually didn't make it all the way through, but I did make the top top score. So that's what it was all about for me. I was happy with that. And uh, as long as you got a VMU, your score will always be remembered, at least until the VMU battery runs out. But that's a, that's another thing. <laughs> but anyways, guys, a ghost blade definitely worth picking up. Uh, I had fun with this game. The game only complaint I know about this game is that people say it's short. Uh, I think it's wrong like around five levels, maybe six, if I can remember right. Because I did beat this game before, but just not this time. I was a bit rusty. So go pick up Ghostblade. I mean, you won't regret it. I mean, it's, it may be short, but it's sweet. You know what I mean? Something you get into and get out of. Gunlord I actually found by chance. I was actually trying to look up some Metroidvania type games and this one came up and I was like, wow, a Dreamcast game. The game was actually released on the Neo Geo first from what I believe. And after looking up some gameplay, I found I was able to find a, a, a copy, affordable copy at least, on eBay. So first off, Gunlord is a semi-sequel to The Last Hope for Dreamcast. Uh, basically the ending of that game, uh, the pilot of the ship, she crash lands on, uh, on a planet and now her boyfriend is out looking for her, and that's where this game comes in. 
the game starts out strong. It looks fantastic. Uh, I love the weapons that you have available in the beginning. The spray gun is, is pretty much my favorite gun. Probably be pretty much anybody's favorite weapon in a game like this. The game just is, looks really good on the eyes. The background, the waterfalls, just how everything moves. It's just, man, it's just, it just feels like a real throwback to like old school games. I know we see more of these type games in this day and age, but you have to think about it, guys. Not all those games are good, you know what I mean? This game is excellent. I mean, the developers did a good job on this game. This is definitely worth playing. Uh, just remember, like, not every Metroidvania type game is worth your time. There are some games out there that's like, just, ugh. But this one is not one of them. So in closing, I just want to say uh, I think uh, Gun Lord is worth picking up. You know, it's kind of hard to find a physical copy of the game right now for a good price. But they are out there. But there are other means of being able to play this game. So just remember that and check out Gun Lord. Bang Bang Busters was pretty much the one of the reasons I waited to do this video for so long. This game just came out on the Dreamcast. It's been out on the um, Neo Geo CD for a little bit. And also, uh, well, first off, this was an unreleased arcade game back in 1994, 93. I don't know why it was held back, but I'm glad it's here now. So as you can see right now, the game gives you a tutorial on how to play the game. That's really nice. Uh, I like games that do that and make it look interesting. But just on the short, I'm just going to tell you guys, this game plays like a mixture of a Bubble Bobble mixed with the Snow Bros. And if you play Bubble Bobble or Snow Bros, that's a good thing because this game is awesome. The game's story starts out with an SOS signal from a planet and you decide to go investigate. Um, I actually like games like this to have a little bit of story mode because it kind of makes it fun. And I mean, when I when I say fun, I mean I mean like fun silly, you know, you, it, I know the story is not going to be too serious, but still, I like that they add that feature to these type of games. It shows that they, they cared about it, you know what I mean, besides just gameplay. You know, adding story to games uh, really, um, you know, makes a difference, you know? But that could be said for any game, you know. But anyways, besides the story, gameplay is fantastic. A lot of fun. Levels are, are pretty much, they look beautiful, actually. You can see here, uh, this is actually the first level of the game. And you can have a second player join you at any time. So pretty much your objective is to uh, clear the screen. You know, uh, you throw your sonic waves, you throw enemies into each other, and you clear the screen and try to collect as many points as possible until you move on to the next area. Um, every area is slightly different, gets more tougher, and uh, different enemies will come and attack you. And then you always, every area you go into, you'll finally get to the boss. And the boss is usually around the uh, fifth or sixth stage of the, of the level. So I've only gotten up to the fourth stage of this game. I haven't beat it yet. Um, and what I've noticed is that the bosses that you fight in the game, they start off kind of like, like I won't say simplistic, but they, they start off with not doing too much. And then as they get on, you, yeah, as you go on, you start to see like, uh, they, they start to add more moves to their arsenal, make things harder. Now, I don't know if there's any different bosses in the game. I'm pretty sure there is, but this is the boss I got to. And then I got to him again and he was a little bit more tough. After beating a boss, you're rewarded with another cutscene to kind of flesh out more of the story. So each stage, after after a boss fight, you get a cutscene. And if you're interested in the story, there's that for you. Now, for what I've noticed so far is that the game starts you out with four credits, you know, and, and that's including the credit you start with the game. So you'll have three credits left. Um, I did try the swap trick where you could try to put your uh, controller, well, have the controller already ready so you can start the other player's game. That's another way you could keep going, but the game does save, so if you die at it on a certain level, you could continue back to that level after the game is over. The only thing you have to sacrifice is your score. But anyways, guys, Bang Bang Busters is a fantastic game that you will love. Uh, available now for the Dreamcast. Uh, check this sucker out. You won't regret it. Four x four jam is an off-road racing game. Now I've never really played any game like this before. The only game I could think that came somewhat uh, close to this was a Smuggler's Run. But other than that, I've never played a game like this before. So pretty much, uh, you're not racing on tracks. You're racing to get the checkpoints and whoever gets there first. And pretty much, who who gets the most checkpoints out of the match wins. Uh, it's really it's really crazy because uh, your your opponents will obviously try to run you off the road or do anything to try to stop you from getting to the checkpoint before them. You unlock other tracks by winning racing and also other vehicles as well. 
Uh, so far, this was the only vehicle available to me. And as you keep winning, you'll get money to buy the other vehicles. But I wasn't able to test them out yet. I just wanted to show you guys this one. And uh, the control is pretty wild, but that, that's to say because all the, the terrain you're going across. But honestly, I think these type of games are more fun when there's like multiple players playing. If there was some kind of split screen option or something like that, it'd be pretty cool. But for just one player, it's kind of hard to recommend, though it is fun, but it might get boring for some after a while. Battlecrest is a new shoot 'em up game. Uh, this game uh, caught me by surprise. I was actually uh, looking for games on Play Asia, and I happened to come by this one, and I was like, "Well, what is this?" And I looked at some gameplay, and this is a brand new shoot 'em up for the Dreamcast. If I haven't said it yet in the video, you gotta admit, guys, you know, for this anniversary for the Dreamcast, this will be its 20th year. Well, after after it's been out. Um, that we're still getting new games for the system and not just any generic game these games are amazing and battle crust did not disappoint me as you can see from the intro the game has its own story mode and uh, i didn't really pay too much attention to it i just wanted to hop into the game i mean it's already like just awesome that i'm playing a new dreamcast game so i really wanted to get into this game so it starts out pretty simple and you get upgrades of course for your weapons and you also which is outstanding as you can see here, is you can change the view mode in the game during gameplay, so you can actually play in tape mode. But remember guys, tape mode is pretty much for the hardcore guys. You know, if you got a monitor for it, man, you're good to go. So uh, you don't really have to worry about it. So real fast in this game, I like the graphics. So, you know, it has that old school sprite based type graphics. So that's really a throwback for me. I mean, not too many games that I notice, you know, have this type of look anymore. The music is, uh, the music is actually really good actually I just can't remember any tunes that really like like made me jump up right 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 now but the music is good and also the controls are precise pretty much you know and it's just a lot of fun the only thing I didn't really like which I guess I could understand is the game is not two players I mean it was made for one player and um, the way the weapons are I, I guess I understand that so charge shots spread shots and all that stuff it would have been a mess if you had two players on here maybe I'm not really sure when I first popped this game into my Dreamcast, I thought I was only going to play for a couple of minutes, but it's one of those games that really pull you in and you just want to keep playing. It's a lot of fun, and I love the fact that you can, it's, it's one of those shoot 'em up games where if you get killed, you can start back on the same spot that you died on. I like that. I don't really care about starting at checkpoints because you kind of lose the momentum, you have to gain certain weapons again. Just get, it's just kind of weird, but uh, Battle Crest is definitely a game you want to have in your collection if you're into shoot 'em ups. Uh, it's not a bullet hell, it's more of a shoot 'em up. Yes, yeah, with bullet hells, you know, there's bullets all over the place, different crazy colors, it kind of confuse you. But let me know what you guys think of the game in the comments. I would like to know. Finally, we have Breakers for the Dreamcast. This originally was on the Neo Geo CD, I think, and also was in the arcades. Um, I'm not sure the process they used to port this game over to the Dreamcast, but I thought it played pretty well and it looks really good. Now you might be saying, looking at this select screen, there's not that many characters in the game. Well, when games don't have that many characters, that means the games are pretty much they're pretty much balanced, in my opinion. You know. Too many characters in a game kind of like overflows everything and just uh, just makes things kind of difficult. But I do admit this game could use a couple of more characters, but still, for what they have, the game is pretty good. It was easy to pull off special moves in this game, and I like that the character sprites are really big. I would have never known about this game had it not come out on the Dreamcast. Um, I'm a big fighting game fanatic. You guys know I love fighting games, and I, I look for all kinds of different ones out there. And uh, thankfully I found this one and it did not disappoint. I'm really enjoying it so far. 
I haven't beat the game yet, but I look forward to in the future. Breakers did have a sequel, and I kind of wonder why they didn't bring the sequel out on the Dreamcast instead. Um, maybe it was harder to, to port. I'm not really sure, but you would think they would have brought that one out if they had a chance, you know, well, had a choice to bring one of them out. Maybe they didn't have the choice. I don't know. Anyways, guys, Breakers a solid game. Go check it out. Hey guys, want to give a shout out to Josh Pod for sending me some of these games. And I'll leave a link in the description of where you can pick some of these games up from. The Dreamcast lives on, and people are still making games for it, and I am very impressed with what I am seeing. Uh, Dreamcast will live forever as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Anyways, guys, Radical Reggie, and I will see you next time.